In this episode, we're talking about keyframe animation. So let's get into it. So keyframe animation is basically just creating different points within your video to animate specific properties, and that's going to create an animation. So you can do this for your scale, position, rotation, opacity, and you can also do it for specific video effects. So let's begin with the motion side of that. So let's select this video clip. We'll go to the very beginning, and then we'll go up to the top left to the effect controls tab. Now, if for some reason you can't see effect controls, just go into window and make sure effect controls is turned on. So as you can see in the effect controls tab, we've got the video and motion. So we're going to animate the motion. So basically let's start with scale and position. So at the very beginning, we'll select these two icons. So this is the toggle animation button. We'll select that on position and then we'll select that on scale. Now we're just going to move towards the end of the clip and then we're going to increase our scale to 100 and we'll move the position over to the left. So essentially what we've done is we've just created this digital zoom in between these two clips. As you can see. So just to explain a bit further, the keyframes here, these points that I made here, this, this keyframe on the scale represents 50 and this keyframe here on the position represents 960 on the horizontal axis and 540 on the vertical axis. And then if we go to this second one, so we go to the second set of keyframes. The scale is now 100 and the position is 2026 by 540. And because we've got these two different points, it basically means that between these five seconds or these six seconds, it's going to change from 50 to 100 and the position will change as well. Now, if you wanted to speed that up, then all you have to do is just decrease the gap between those keyframes. So as you can see, that is a very short amount of time and that's just going to zoom in really quick. Of course, if you pull these really close together, then that's just going to create this really aggressive zoom in effect. And of course, you can always go ahead and change this back as well. So let's change this to 50. It will pull the position back over. So we're starting at 50 and then we're zooming into 100 and then slowly going back out to 50 again. So let's see how that looks. That looks great. And of course, it's not just the position, the scale you can animate. You can also adjust anything with a stopwatch icon. So we've got rotation. Let's create a new keyframe on rotation. We'll move over, pull this back to zero. So we'll use the add remove keyframe option. Then we'll go between those two keyframes and we'll adjust the position of the rotation. So we'll change that to, let's go to 16. Now, now that is going to animate following the keyframes. So we've got our position scale animation here, and then we've got the rotation animation here. Now moving on, we've got the anchor points and the anchor point is basically just where the animation is coming from. So let's say this notepad is an object. The anchor point is default set to the middle. So it means if we do a rotation effect, it will rotate from the middle. But if we place the anchor point up here, it means when we add rotation, it's going to rotate around that anchor point and the object is going to behave differently depending on where that anchor point is. Let me show you what I mean. So as you can see, the anchor point is this circle here. So we'll just move this over to the left. So somewhere up here and then we'll pull it down a bit. Now when we animate again, you can see the scale and the zoom is animating from there and then the rotation looks different because it's animating from the left rather than from the middle. I'm just going to reset that though. And then we've got the anti flicker filter, but don't worry about that for now. And then of course, moving now, we've got opacity. So create a new keyframe on opacity by selecting the stopwatch or the toggle animation button. We'll move over, pull this down to zero, and that's going to create a nice subtle fade to black. Now adjusting the opacity like this basically means that if we add a layer underneath this video, it's going to transition from this clip into the new clip. So we'll put this clip onto video layer two and we'll put another clip onto video layer one. Now, when we animate from these keyframes, so we've got 100 down to zero. If we play this back, it transitions from one clip into another. And of course, the same rules apply on this different effect. So the same rules apply on this opacity as it does with the scale and position. If you increase the gap, it's going to take a lot longer to transition from one clip into another, as you can see. 
But of course, like I said before, it's not just the motion that you can affect with keyframe animation. And we're going to go into the effects tab. So we'll go into effects. And again, if you can't see effects, then you just want to go into window effects and make sure that is ticked. Now in here, we've got video effects and we've got all of these different folders with all of these different effects in here. So let's go for some color correction. So we'll go for levels, search for levels. And then we're just going to drop the levels plugin onto that video clip. And as you can see in levels, you've got all of these different options. So you've got RGB black input level, RGB white input level, RGB black output level, RGB white output level and RGB gamma. And then that's on every single channel. So your red, green and blue channels. So let's see white input level. Let's increase this. How does that look? So that looks really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a flash animation using our keyframe animation. So we'll go a few seconds in and create a brand new keyframe on RGB white input level. Then we'll move two frames to the right. We'll pull this down to a higher number. So somewhere around here, then two frames to the right again and pull that back up to 255. Now, when we play this back, now, when we play this back, it's going to animate between those keyframes. It's going to increase the white input level and then pull it back down again, like so. And again, you can also increase the gap between those keyframes if you want that to be slower, like so. And of course, again, you can also animate the other channels. So you've got the red black output level. So you can add some red into there. So we'll go to the middle, pull that up to 255, we'll go to the beginning. Pull that back down to zero, go to the end, pull that down to zero again. And as you can see, we're creating this red color hue on top of that brightness adjustment as well. But we'll delete levels and we'll move on to another effect. So we'll go into video effects and we won't do a color correction one. We'll do something else. Let's go for lens distortion. So we'll drop lens distortion onto the clip. And then in the lens distortion plugin, we've got curvature, vertical decentering, horizontal decentering, vertical prism effects, horizontal prism effects, and then a fill color. So all of these you'll notice have got this icon on. That is the toggle animation button. So let's go to roughly the middle. We'll create a brand new keyframe on all of those different settings. Then we'll move over to the right and we'll select all of those settings. So select all of those holding your command button. Then we're just going to create a brand new keyframe on all of those by selecting the add keyframe button. So we'll go through, add those keyframes. Then we'll go in between those keyframes and we'll increase the curvature or we'll decrease the curvature. Add some vertical decentering, some horizontal decentering, vertical prism effects, horizontal prism effects until you get to where you're happy. And of course you can change the fill color if you're going the other way, but that doesn't really affect us here. And now when we play this back, you'll see we've got this effect animating because we're using keyframe animation. So essentially keyframe animation is just changing the specific values of a specific effect at a specific time. And then when you move across in time and you change the value of that specific asset, then it's also going to animate between the first point and the second point and any other point that you add later on. So keyframe animation feels really complicated, but it's actually really simple. Now, before we finish this episode, I'm just going to talk about one more thing, and that is how to add character to your keyframes. So we'll delete the lens distortion effect and we'll go back to the scale and position. So we're going to create a screen pump effect. So we'll create a brand new keyframe on scale and position. We'll move two frames to the right, create another keyframe, and then we'll move four frames to the right, one, two, three, four. And we'll create another keyframe on both of those. Now we'll go to that second keyframe and we'll increase this a little bit. So we'll increase this to 63%. And when we play this back, we've got this really cool screen pump effect. But to take this to the next level, we're going to select all of this. We'll right click, go to temporal interpolation and we'll select ease in. Now temporal interpolation sounds extremely complicated, but I promise it's actually fairly simple. It's just the way the keyframes are animating between each other. 
So if I go back to temporal interpolation, you can see I've selected ease in. Essentially, by adding this ease in temporal interpolation onto the keyframe, it basically just means it's going to slowly accelerate into the keyframe rather than just suddenly starting when the keyframe starts. It's going to ease into that and accelerate into it. And it's just going to make that feel a lot nicer and a lot more natural. So as you can see, if I play that back, you can see that looks mildly better. But there you go. Keyframe animation sounds really complicated, but it is actually quite simple once you get your head around it. And it is the backbone of animation inside of Premiere. If you want to animate a title in or out, it's going to be keyframe animation. If you want to adjust your color grading over time, keyframe animation. If you want to add other specific effects, it's going to be keyframe animation. So understanding and getting your head around keyframe animation is one of the best things that you can do when it comes to learning Premiere. So take the time to practice and add some keyframe animation onto your video clips or your titles. And I promise you learning the basics of keyframe animation is going to take you so much further into understanding how Premiere works. But there you go. This episode is now complete. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about transitions and I'm going to show you how you can use this keyframe animation to create beautiful transitions from one clip into another.